just as they said, life without God is nothing. Right, Naza? Yeah. Okay. So, on this note, we have a very wonderful person in the studio with us. Yes, this person is a pastor, is an evangelist, is grounded when it comes to the word of God. And I'll be doing this um, segment alone. I'll be anchoring with my co-host, Naza. You're very much welcome, sir. Thank you very much. So, um, let's meet you. Let's meet you, sir. Okay, my name's uh, Pastor Christian James. And um, the name of my ministry is um, Shalom Congregation Ministry at Aja. I'm the resident pastor there now. Okay. Yes. So at Aja. Yes, at Aja. So that means we did a wonderful job by bringing all the way from Aja <laughs> down to Aja. <laughs> it's good, sir. It's my pleasure too. Oh, wow. So, uh, so how long have you been pastoring now? Yeah, actually, I've been pastoring going, going to like, um like uh, let me say, going to seven years now. Seven? Yes. Wow. Uh, actually, I was running my outreach before I get this offer in, in Aja. Okay. So being the assistant pastor there. But my outreach still run, but actually seven years hmm. as a pastor. Wow, it's a pastor. Now, 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 uh, let me ask this question before I will give it to my co-host. All right, sir. Now, um, talking about pastors that were actually called by God, and those that went to school of theology, right? Which of them do more better when it comes to the teaching of the Word of God? Uh, actually, actually, to me, everybody is called by God. Mm-hmm. Everybody is called by God. The Bible says, "Many are called, but few are chosen." Mm-hmm. So that few are choosing that the one that has the call of God. Okay. So the one that is going to church, so it's just like I pick you. I want to train you. That you can go to school. Let me just impart. We call that one impartation. Mm. That's the word theology. Impartation. You go there, they will impart you and you graduate. But that few that was called, that is the main people God has called. So, so, so I, I, I trying to say that if me personally I, I'm not called by God and I just go to school of theology, I cannot own a church of my own. No, you can have a church on your own. It's all depend on that person. Oh, okay. I it's all depend. Yeah. Everybody is called. Everybody is called to do the work of God. And, and, and God will actually um accept that fact that okay, I opened a church preaching his words and I it was not I it wasn't I wasn't called by him. And the thing is that as 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 for me, yeah. as a believer, as a pastor, okay. I believe that everybody has to do the work of God. Okay. When you have the passion of doing it, are you with me? When you have the passion of doing it, God can honor it because He wants everybody to do what we are all running the same race to achieve one good. Okay. Yes, we are all running the same race to achieve one good. And the goal is to win souls to the kingdom of God. Okay. So when you feel, you feel like you are going to theological school to acquire this knowledge, you are getting you are going to the school to acquire this knowledge so that things you might understand the ministry. For instance, like David. The Bible said David is a man after God's heart. Yeah. And David said, God said, is my choosing. So everybody is God choosing. But it's all depend on who that person is. Mm. Okay. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank for that. you very much, sir. Concerning the suspension to members of church or expelling a member of church, for example, a member who commit. Okay, let me say, for example, a member who got pregnant because I've seen the cases where a member will get pregnant the member might be suspended or the member might be asked to sit at the back of the church, of the yeah, church. Yeah, I've seen cases like yes. that too so what do you think is, uh, is this supposed is right? to be is it right uh-huh. actually let me comment sir yes I like that question it's very okay but actually if you watch the days of our fathers yeah. and our time now it's very different <laughs> most of these churches they were operating in the old. Okay. Are you getting it? They are, is they, are, they are operating in the old. But Jesus has come to die for me and you. So to me, suspension is not it. It's not right. Mm-hmm. But there's some churches that have their own doctrine. Okay. okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. Like, like let me say, for instance, the Anglican, the Pentecostal, they have the doctrine. So everybody depends on, I would like say, every person has their own doctrine on how to undo the, the members. Mm-hmm. But to me, to my church, we don't do that. Because I feel, I feel when you suspend, so like me, if you suspend in the church, they're like giving you room to go to other churches. Yes, actually, is, that one is correct. But as I said, every church has their pattern. Like, you cannot bring the things of the old to the new. Jesus has come to pay the price for everybody. And is it biblical that you suspend someone in the church? Yeah. Is it biblical um, that you express someone from the church when you are trying to win soul for Christ, also chasing out the soul? It's, it's not biblical. 
Okay, it's not by Vinica. I'm not saying when it in the Bible. When a girl caught an unwanted pregnancy, is it okay for the girl to be asked to stay at the back? Let's say, for instance, a chorister singing in the church Just and it. got pregnant or wanted the. Is not is not right. We are not how to no. What do you think? What do you think is church should do? The church because I said something earlier on. I said we are all. You asked me a question. Okay. On concerning calling of God. Yes. And I said everybody is called, and we are all pushing to a goal. So you doing this thing by chasing them away, we are pushing them to the world. Hmm. Hmm. You are pushing them to the world, and you are believing God for what a soul to come to the church. So any soul that you put in the Bible or suspend them, they might not be there. They will go to the world. So uh, uh, okay, sir. So don't you think if you don't actually chase them away, you don't punish them? Don't you think other members will want to repeat the same thing, same that the same mistake that the, the person has done? Yeah. yeah, it depends. As a pastor, we are called to teach people. Okay. We are called to guide people. As I said, but many are called, but few are choosing. There are some people that don't understand the ministry. Hmm. When such person has issue like that, you don't chase them. You draw them close. As a father, you correct them. By correction, they will change from that attitude. Not you pushing them outside or putting them in the back. If you put them in the back, what well, is a doctrine? Because only it's not actually uh, the way of God. It's just no, doctrine. It's, 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 it's doctrine. Okay, sir. This will uh, actually make me want to ask this question. Okay. Now, I don't know if I'm correct from my own perspective, but what do you think about doctrine and tradition? Are they the same thing, or is there any slight difference between a doctrine and a tradition? A tradition is something that our forefathers as please okay on the hood a doctrine is just i cannot stand up and say this thing i don't want this here this thing i want this here it's all depend on what you want okay there's there's not uh, there's, it's not the same thing it's not the same thing mm -hmm. like see what I, I always say something to people in my church was well, this woman i'm working with is a very strong woman so i work with him with sense and it make me to understand some certain things okay let me just divide a little like do you know that Traditional marriage and white marriage is a very different thing. Yes, yes. Mm. But, but I, 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 I would disagree a bit, sir, for that. Saying traditional marriage and um, white marriage is, is, is not the same thing. It's not the same thing. Uh, don't you think white marriage is the tradition of the Europeans? Is that, that's, that's where I'm coming. Okay. We Africans, we have our own tradition, tradition which is a traditional marriage. Yes. yes. But now, the white people have brought this white tradition to us. That was in many churches today, they like doing that. Right. We call it dogma. Hmm. Okay. Yes, we call it dogma in the ministry. Dogma. Right? Dogma. Hmm. So when you, you have that thing, it's not really mandated that you must do the white. But based on that, because you are a minister or you are a pastor in the church, hmm. you must stay example to what happened that is called because it has been there in the hood. Before now, okay. Is it is it also biblical you do a white wedding? Or which, which one is more important? The one that is more important as an African man. Okay. When you do your tradition, you are good to go. Even if you don't do the white, you don't do the white. Yes. Even if you don't do the white wedding, when you do the tradition, but they want to do like they want to add you add the court. Okay, court wedding. The tradition and the court is okay. Uh, this will also want me to uh, make me want to ask this um, question because we all have phones and we are aware of what is happening in society today. Yes. Yeah. So I've been constant on Facebook recently, even on TikTok, and I've been seeing pastors um, bantering themselves here and there, talking about how tithe is important, tithe is not important, prosperity gospel, and here and there. This pastor, I don't, I don't want to mention names, this one attacking this one, this one attacking this one. Now, what do you have to say about that, sir? Thank you very much. Let me just show a little light on that, sir. Actually, tight is good. Tight will not make you to prosper. Mm. But tight will make you... The thing that you are expecting will come. Mm. When the Bible said in Malachi 3.10, it said, Bring me all the tithes in the house of God. It's talking about the priesthood. Okay. If you go back to the Old Testament... Say, bring me the time. It's a peaceful time. There's some people that will come to church. They don't have food to eat. Are you with me, man? Yes, sir. There's some people that will come to church. They're, 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 in need. they're, they're in need of something. So that's why they say, bring all the tithes. Now, the tithe is not meant for the pastors. 
Okay. It's not meant for the pastors. Okay. You want to go to scripture now? Look closer today. But let us go to scripture. It's not meant for the pastors. So the time it's meant for? for the people in the church. Now, for instance, okay. I come, I pay my tithes. Now, you see this building. Uh, we can maintain this building with the tithes. With the tithes. Mm. What of the seed sowing and the no, the seed sowing, the, the seed sowing, the offering. Uh, All these things is from your heart. Okay. Like what I said, I'm coming. Like what I said in the church yesterday. I told them fasting and prayer does not give you money. Okay. Mm. Yes, sir. Does not give you money, but it makes you your effort to locate you. Wow. Do you know you can pray and fast and go outside? So I say, ah, but a success. I'm looking for you. Take this thing. That was the type that um, the prayer and prayer can do. The fasting and prayer can do. But it cannot give. But it can give you connection. It can bring your effort to you closer. Closer. Okay. So that tithe is for the priesthood. When there is no food in the church, now there's some pastor that is there in church full time. How do we pay them? How do they, they sustain? And I do the work of God. They need to be paid. They need to be paid. So, so it's from children. Actually, it's from that tithe. Uh, you can bring your tithe. I can bring my tithe. You can bring the tithe. They now pay for the tithe. Did you know that inside that tithe, there's a tithe of tithes? Tithe of tithes. Tithe of tithes. Yes, tithe of tithes. Wow. Okay, let's not that tithe. Since we that tithe of tithes. For because of time. But I want to ask you, you said something that um, you quoted somewhere in the Bible that bring here all the. Yeah, Malachi 3 10. Now, Tithe, is it basically money? Or other things can be used can as you that side? Yes, that's why we have um, uh, we have um, Thanksgiving. Okay. Thanksgiving, some of have mid-year Thanksgiving, some of have end of year Thanksgiving in church. Okay. Tithe might not be money. Hmm. Okay. But some people do it. But they say pay your tithe and monthly. Monthly, 10%. 10%, yes, monthly. See, the, the 10% that we are talking about, yes, sir, it can be anything. Okay, do you have to go to church whereby then some people don't, you don't have offering. But your presence in the house of God is your tithes. Wow. Mm. <laughs> That's why they have the microphone. That's why. For instance, let's give our offering. Okay. Let's give our offering. Let's give our offering. Yeah. So we now feel that they don't have. But the Bible says God is not looking your offering. God is looking your heart and your okay. presence in His temple. Okay. Okay, uh, welcome back. Um, sir, this is um, the point we've been waiting for. Wow. The Talk Your Mind segment. Uh, don't be scared that this is a calabash. <laughs> this is a pastor and this is a calabash. <laughs> so don't be scared. All right, um, this is what I will do. It's you pick a question from here, then uh, we'll read it to you, then you answer it correctly. You have to be honest. That's why it's called Talk Your Mind. You have to talk your mind. Say the truth. Yeah. So are you going to go? Or we should yeah, yeah, okay. go. All right, let's go. Talk Your Mind. Just speak. Okay, Nazar, just read. Oh God, okay, I should read it. Okay. Hmm, this question for a man of God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, sir. What is the biggest sin you think you can ever commit? What is the biggest sin? Yeah, yes, answer. <laughs> you think you can ever commit? The biggest sin. What is the biggest sin? <laughs> This question is <laughs> oh, you personally, not general. To me, the new she, personally, yeah. maybe money laundering, maybe uh, actually, to me, the biggest sin I can commit and uh, I know I commit uh, is by maybe when God did not speak to me and I start telling you That's what God did not say. Mm. Mm. That's the biggest sin, yes, biggest sin mm. to me, really, yes. Maybe God did not speak to me. I don't see you say, ah, and the Lord said, no, 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 I cannot do that. I don't see, I don't commit. It's a very big sin to me and my God. Okay. That's the biggest sin I can commit. So everybody knows their own right, part and weaknesses. To me, that's the biggest sin I've committed. Let's, 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 okay. Don't be scared. Yes. <laughs> hey, talk your mind. Okay. Choose between being a politician controlling millions or being a pastor without a church of your own. Ah, I mean, I go for my church of church. Oh. 
No, no, Pastor, 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 Okay, I do. I want. I wanted to ask this question, but because of our time, I wanted to ask: How can you identify a true man of God? But I guess we'll leave that um, question for another day. Okay. But then let me ask um, this: Who is actually your spiritual father? Because I believe they said every man of God should be under someone's tutelage, someone should have trained you, or so who is your spiritual father? Actually, there's to me. There's uh, to me the way I brought up. There's not like spiritual father. My father is my spiritual father. Your father, father, father. Yes. father. is a pastor. The pastor. Okay. Pastor. Spiritual father. But what I also have is a mentor. Mm. Yeah. Like the person I'm under is my mentor. As in Pastor Choma Fagosi is my mentor. Pastor Choma Fagosi is my mentor. So, so um, which, which big, which big um, name in the Christian dome you're looking up to? As wow. like Pastor Choma Fagosi. Ah, Joseph Suleiman. That's the man I wanted to meet. I'm a desire to meet him. Mm. And I know I will meet him someday. Okay. Of course. So signing what you just said, I want to ask okay. um what is your advice to pastors? Do you advise pastors to just maintain on their church, getting the money they used to feed their family from their church? Or your advice as a pastor, you should have it also beside also. Side also as a pastor. Actually, it's, it's good to have something doing. Are you with me? It's good to have as a pastor because now the way this country is going, no man wants to give anybody anything. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, the way the country is going. So <laughs> you must do something. Even our Lord Jesus Christ did something. Was the was the he did something. So nothing is too small. But when you are doing anything, don't let that thing that you are doing overshadow the ministry. Okay. Maybe you can be doing a work, maybe by the time of your administration, your program, your activities, you must be punctual. But you might have something to do, sustain the family. It's wow. very important. Very important. Very important. Thank you. All right. Um, thank you very much, uh, Pastor James. My pleasure. Um, it's a really a wonderful time <laughs> with you. Uh, I think we've learned a lot. So uh, we've come to the end of today's episode on Talk Your Mind. Um, stay tuned. Always keep watching us on YouTube, on Facebook, and on uh, Instagram, we talking at team. All right. My name is uh, Success, we talking and my co-host, Naza. See you next time. Bye.